Hello everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. We're gonna go ahead and start off pretty much right here at the beginning of day two, and the first thing I want to do, and we're back by the way, in regular Ramani Ranch, I went ahead and restarted that save from last time, from the last episode where I showed you the alternate Ramani Ranch. Actually, that was just an entirely separate save. But anyway, I want to go ahead and talk to Kremia. Oh my, hello. Romani is going to take our milk to Clocktown too. You're looking after the place. The cows would be all alone otherwise. Yes, sister. I'm going by wagon into town. Would you like a ride? I'll be leaving about 6 o'clock this evening, so you can join me if you'd like. Now, Kremia, the ranch owner, has been added to our notebook now. So that means we've got to help her as well as Romani, even though we've kind of already helped Romani. And by the way, it's kind of, it seems like, and we'll see a little bit of dialogue later on that kind of confirms this, if you want to call it a con confirmation. But, Kremia doesn't even know about the alien invasion, and she thinks Romani is lying about it, which I think is hilarious, because it's pretty obvious, if she had just came outside that night, she would have seen all the aliens flying around and everything. But anyway, here we are back in the Mountain Village, and the reason we need to come back to the Mountain Village is because it is now day two, six o'clock in the morning, like I said. We can come back to the Mountain Village and get our Razor Sword back, and deposit our Gold Dust, and get a Gilded Sword. I'm gonna go, go ahead and get my gilded my gold dust out right now i kept you waiting but it's done see and we get the razor sword our kokiri sword has been strengthened into it now it is a new sharper blade which is a cut above the rest we can only use it 100 times before it will lose its edge as the owner says here or the you know the blacksmith or whatever even though all he really does is sit on the couch right here if we find gold dust which we already have we can get the strongest sword in the land or whatever he just said. I want to go ahead and show you the sword. I kind of like the look of it. The only problem is what we're going to do is immediately talk to the blacksmith and deposit it for, you know, like I said, give the gold dust to the guy because we want to get the gilded sword. And the gilded sword, like he said, is, is the strongest sword in the land that they know of, which I'm assuming they don't know. There's another sword we're going to get later on in the game, not to really spoil anything. And I'm just going to leave the dialogue up here so you guys can read it if you want. But I'm not going to read it, I just want to kind of talk over it at this point, I guess. But yeah, there's another sword we're going to be getting near the end of the game, in the last area, that is actually stronger than the Gilded Sword, and it's a C item, a C button item, which is a kind of a weird concept, but we will get to that after, you know, in a kind of a, a little bit of time. Actually, it's going to be quite a bit of time, probably in the next cycle, but now we've dropped off our Razor Sword slash Gold Dust combo at the Smithy, and our next order of business, I guess you could say, is to go back to Clocktown. You might remember in the last episode or the episode before that or even maybe the episode before that. I can't exactly remember when it was, but we played a game at the Honey and Garlic Shop, which I think it was Bomb Chew. I can't remember what they called it, but basically all we had to do was put Bomb Chews on targets. We had to throw the Bomb Chews and line it up just so that it would go into the targets and blow up the targets. Anyway, we're going to do sort of the same thing in this episode, but it's going to be with bombs. And we're going to be playing basketball with him. But we don't really have much money right now, or rupees. I'm going to go ahead and withdraw some rupees here because we're going to need rupees to play the game, first of all. And I'm not sure if I'm even going to get it on the first try, so I'm going to go ahead and withdraw quite a few of these. Even though this mini game is probably, I would say, maybe the easiest of the three mini games that we're going to be playing at the Honey and Darling Shop. But we are going to need a few rupees coming up after this minigame, I believe. If I remember my, you know, plan correctly, we're gonna need a couple of rupees. Anyway, we're gonna go ahead and make our way over to the Honey and Darling Shop, which you might remember is in East Clocktown. I already showed you the thing where you shoot arrows into the eyes, so I guess it's really not worth it at this point. Also, I'm not even sure if it would give you more rupees, but here we are in the Honey and Darling Shop. Looks exactly the same as it did on day one, but if we talk to them here, eventually they will get to a line of dialogue that signifies, and this is the one right here, are we the one that got the perfect score yesterday? We're going to play Basket Bob today. If they don't give you that line about were you the one that got the perfect score yesterday, you might as well not even bother because you're not on track to get the heart piece anymore. So we are, in this case, we're going to go ahead and play. I'm actually really confident in my abilities at this minigame, unlike the minigame, I love how I missed the first shot, as soon as I said I was pretty confident, but unlike the Bombshu bowling-esque minigame, this one's actually kind of easy, especially because you can throw it in the exact direction. I have no idea how that one went in right there, but you can throw it exactly where you want the bomb to go for the most part, so it's actually fairly easy. I guess this last one's just going to be the bane of my existence, and there we go, so it actually was not that bad. I still think it's kind of funny. How they, basically, they flood their shop 
just in case a bomb goes awry, then it'll be, the fuse will be put out with the, you know, the water on the floor. But anyway, we're going to be getting a purple ruby here, another 50 rupees. So I guess I didn't need to withdraw quite as many rupees as I did, but you know, I guess you can't, hindsight is 2020. I guess, is the phrase the kids use these days. But we're going to go ahead and use the Song of Soaring again to warp back. I guess we might as well go back to Milk Road, because there is a thing that we need to do in Milk Road that has to do with the Pona. And we could have done this already, I think, yeah, we could have done this on day one. Anytime you get a Pona, you can go do the thing that I'm about to do, but I might as well just go ahead and do it now, because we need to do a couple of things. Actually, this is like the final thing that I want to do before we go back to the Zora Hall and mess around with that. But we need to go ahead and summon Epona here, of course, because we need to ride on Epona. And guess what, guys? We're going to have another racing minigame, which if you remember how the Goron minigame was, or the Goron racing, you know, track or whatever, you know how I feel about racing minigames in the Zelda series. But this one's not quite so bad. It's a little tiny bit difficult, but there are a couple of tricks you can use to make it easier. And I love how the there's billboards up there on the sides that depict like the owners of this ranch which are right here but we need to go ahead and if we z target them if we can get close enough we can actually speak to them and start the minigame is that pathetic thing your horse i would have guessed that little thing was a mule for sure ain't that right little brother do you think a horse that pathetic would gallop if you push the control stick forward or would it run faster if you press a this guy is funny why don't you give us 10 rupees for the chance to race against us if you win we'll give you something nice kid I guess we're gonna race. We cannot take that from these guys. And luckily, this one is just a like a one lap around the trick, the trick, the track type thing. So it's not gonna take a long time. I don't think I'm gonna lose because this one's fairly easy if you follow a few simple steps. I feel like I'm, you know, writing a manual for weight loss here or something like that. But anyway, if you stick on the inside of the track, to the right, of course, the inside of the track, that's pretty much always what that means if you're going around in this direction. I guess if you were going the other direction around the track, it would be the left. But if you stick to the inside of the track, you will eventually get to some things that you've got to jump over, and here they are pretty much right on cue, that you can jump over and they cannot. So they have to go around them while you can just jump over them. So that's where you're going to get the most of your advantage in this little mini game right here. I love how it has the arrow thing up there. There's nothing you can really use your arrows for that would make your chances of winning that much easier. But here is really probably where you're... I guess I'm just going to give up my lead for absolutely no reason. I was going to say, here's where you're going to make up most of your time. You know what, guys? I guess I'll meet you. Apparently, this isn't going to work on the first try like I thought it would. I will meet you guys after I win the race. All right, I thought I'd pick it up here and see if I can... There we go. That's exactly what I wanted to happen the first time. That's like one of the shortest fences that you could ever hope to hop over. And yet, opponent decided to take the day off, I guess, and not hop over. And by the way, my cast kind of went away before I could really explain it. But if you look in the corners, if you rewind a little bit, I think I've said this quite a bit recently, but if you go back and watch that, at the corners of the screen, when it fades away, the corners of the screen are really weird, like the white does not extend to the corners of the screen. I never noticed that. And by the way, here we get the Garo's Mask, which I'll explain much later on. We're not going to need that right now. But I think back on the N64, that didn't happen. But for some reason, it happens on the Virtual Console. I guess has something to do with emulation stuff. Anyway, now that we've gotten the Garo Mask, which I'm not sure I used to say Garo Mask, which I have a feeling is not the proper way to say it, so I'm going to go with Garo for now until I hear better from, you know, a higher authority. But we're going to go ahead and soar to Zora Cave. Now, a couple episodes back, we activated the Owl Statue at the Zora Cape, or Zora Hall is exactly, is pretty much right where we're going to be going. But we need to go in there and examine and talk and basically research all of the stuff that has been going on recently around the Zora Hall because we need to eventually make our way back into the temple that is around here. But like I said, if we try and talk to her, she is not going to say anything to us. So there's not really much point in even doing that right now. But as soon as we go in here, and by the way, I think I mentioned this, this is the back entrance to Zora Hall. So we're actually going in the back entrance. The front entrance is guarded by like, like-likes. I like how I led in with like, and then the first thing I said was like-like. But then there are also those bony fish that are really annoying. So if you go in the back, you have the added benefit of, you know, just being able to skip all that stuff. But in here is the shop. I kind of wanted to show you guys this because it's kind of the, the scenery around the shop is really cool and I really like the shop. Unfortunately, we don't really need to buy anything, so I'm just going to go ahead and leave. Now, we need to go ahead and go around the Zora Hall and go into pretty much all of these doors and talk to people and learn a whole bunch of stuff. Like I said, we're going to be researching kind of what happened 
before we got to the Great Bay Area. But I want to kind of point out that the rest of this episode is going to be kind of full of text dialogue. So if you want action, I suggest tuning into episode 15. Well, let's go ahead and talk to the drummer of the band. Mikau, where have you been? I was worried. The concert in town is coming up, but it seems like all the band members are in a funk. I bet you didn't know that, huh? Especially Lulu. I haven't heard her voice in a long time. She's usually in good spirits, too. Oh, oh, I wonder if this is related to the ocean turning all weird. Actually, I know a little bit of Lulu's secret. Do you want to hear it? Of course. There's a rumor that the ocean is getting weird because there's trouble offshore at Great Bay Temple. And they say that when that happens, something bad will befall the Zora descendant who's been protecting the temple. Do you catch my drift? And lately, Lulu has been looking kind of weird. Maybe Lulu's the... The what? You can't leave me on a cliffhanger like that, but I guess you can. If we look up here, that up there is kind of like our bunk, if you will, in the Zora Hall. The only problem is, apparently in the lore, I think, and actually they might tell us later on, but that drummer right there apparently broke the ladder to get up there. So we're going to have to do a couple of things before we can get up there. But get up there we shall, and what is up there will help us with what is in this room right here. But let's go ahead and I guess if we take out our guitar, we can't do it. We have to actually talk to the guy first to do a jam session. Mikau, where you been? I'm all like, hey, where's Mikau? The concert's coming up soon. And now our band leader has pulled a vanishing act. Evan's all holed up in his room just writing songs. And to top it off, Lulu just stands out back staring at the sea. She doesn't even respond when you talk to her. If you guys think it's just because Lulu's not interested in me, I'd understand. But I'm telling you, it looks like something's really wrong. Is there something you're trying to hide from me? I'm not running an inquiry or anything. But look, if we don't start rehearsing real soon, we're not going to be ready for the concert. Alright, well let's go ahead and do a jam session as he said before. Hey, why don't we forget about waiting for Evan to write a song? Basically, Evan is the band manager, I think. Or maybe he was a drummer, I forget. But he wants to have a jam session by ourselves without anybody else interfering, I guess, with our creative process. The only problem is... We're not Macau, so we don't actually remember how to play the guitar. So we have to play four notes here. And of course, those were not the right four notes. That melody's bogus, man. The way we know what four notes to play, I believe the notes are in a journal or a diary or something like that in that top bunk in the drummer's room. So we're going to have to come back here after we get an item in the next little mini dungeon. And then we can go back up there, learn the rest of the song, and then come back here and do the jamming session with... I forgot his name already, I guess that's how unimportant he is. Zora Hall is not exactly the most important area in the game. You don't ever have to come in here, I don't think. All you really have to do is go behind Zora Hall and talk to Lulu back there, and you'll be able to get into the temple without ever coming in here in the first place. But I really like this area, so I thought I would come in here. Now this guy up here, I'm not sure what role he plays in the band, but let's go ahead and talk to him. Mikau, how was it? Did you get the eggs back? Uh, I'm sorry to say we did not. Oh, you couldn't do it after all. Have you been to see Lulu out in the back by the ocean? Ever since the pirates stole her eggs, she's just been standing out there gazing at the sea and sighing. Macau, we need those eggs saved so Lulu can get her voice back. We've grown accustomed to life in a peaceful sea. The only one among the Zoran tribe who is still able to go to blows with those wild pirates. It is you, with the blood of Zoran heroes flowing within you. I'm still keeping Lulu's problem a secret from the other band members. They've all been looking forward to her own Carnival of Time concert. And I can't tell them it's canceled because Lulu can't sing, can I? Well, I guess not, but assuming that he is the band manager, which I'm not sure if he is, I've never really been part of, you know, I'm really into, like I said, the lore of Zora Hall. I kind of think he's the band manager. So actually, no, the band manager is Toto from, that we met a couple episodes back. Anyway, I think it might be up to him to tell everybody that, you know, Lulu is not up to it because I think everybody deserves to know. But this guy right here, or girl, I'm not even entirely sure, once to get in the room this room right here is lulu's room and for some reason he wants to get in there to look around which is really weird now later on actually right now we could go back to lulu and take a picture of lulu and give that picture to that zora that just ran away for five rupees but we can take a picture of her later on and get more but up there there is a heart piece that we cannot get right now and over here is lulu's diary it has been two days since i've lost my voice I don't want Mikau to know, so I talked to Evan about it. He recommended that I take the eggs to the Marine Research Lab to have them checked. I think I'll take them right away. Such a terrible thing has happened today that I don't even know where to begin writing. I heard a sound late at night, and when I opened my eyes, I saw strangers in my room. I tried to fight, but they were able to steal my precious eggs. 
It seems I lost consciousness after that. Today I told everything to Macau, the one person who I didn't want to know about it. At first I was too embarrassed and too sad to do anything. And with the words that Macau said at that moment, I felt that all hope had been lost. But please, Macau, I'm begging you, don't do anything rash. Well, we did something rash. Actually, Macau did something rash. And went and tried to take on all of the pirates in the pirate fortress by himself, which is not a smart thing to do, even though he, like the one of the band members said, we are part of the Zora tribe, or whatever, part of the Zora warrior tribe, I should say. Unfortunately, we were not strong enough. But this guy over here wants to check the levels on our guitar. If we play him a note, he will tell us if it is too high or too low. I kind of like this because there is a glitch associated with it. That one was too quiet. If we play another note, that one is way too loud, so he's going to have to turn it down. If we try and play another note as Mikau, it's going to be too low again, I think. So I'm not even sure how you're supposed to do this, but I don't think you get anything from it. If we go into human form, though, and we try and play our ocarina... We get the most metal ocarina you could ever hope to get. I don't know why that glitch happens, but it does, and we get to play guitar sounds from our ocarina. Now that we have done that, we have another problem to solve here. He has a problem with the lights on the stage here, so all we really got to do is actually we already have our fire arrows out we just got to shoot the fire arrows at the torches that are up on the second level and there are two up there and if we do that we will get the best prize or reward i guess you could say in the entire game five whole rupees and i love how that guy just said Go buy whatever you want with it, or whatever he said. That's like, you know, the joke that people do these days. Like, you give somebody a 10 cents, or a dime, or, you know, a quarter, or something like that, and tell them to go buy something nice. It's like a pity, almost. You know, an insult, I guess you could say. But, we are almost on our cap of rupees, so I guess it's not really that big of a deal. But he could, since the whole entire show kind of depended on it. You could have thought that he would have given us a little more than 5 rupees. But, speaking of rupees... And by the way, that was all there was really to show in the Zora Hall, right now anyway. Speaking of rupees, there is a mini game over here that we can play that I think I might have mentioned when we came through here the first time, but it was nighttime. Now that it is daytime, we can do the mini game. And when I said we were close to filling up on rupees, this will actually fill us up. If we line up ourselves right here and backflip four times and throw our Zora boomerang fins or whatever, it will crack all of the pots and we will get. 100 rupees so that gets us 100 rupees but helping the show only gets us five of course they take away 10 for the pot restocking fee or whatever so we only get 90 but in any case that was a lot easier and didn't take quite as many resources actually no resources because it's just our fins and we get more as a reward and for the other one we had to waste fire arrows and magic and we got five rupees anyway now that we've done that, we need to go back, or actually go to the Pirate Fortress for the first time, and kind of pick up where Macau left off in getting the eggs back, because that is now our next goal. Our next goal is getting all seven of the Pirate Eggs back, or the Zora Eggs, I should say, and four of them are in the Pirate Fortress, which is kind of conveniently hidden over here. And you might not know where to go unless you, like, read some other dialogue, but if you have the map, you can see there is an exit off to the top of the map little thing over here and if we crash into this little board right here there a, a basically a little passageway will open up and that passageway leads straight into the pirate fortress so if we walk up a little bit onto this platform we will get a cutscene i'd like to not activate it if possible i guess we're gonna do it now but i like this cutscene because it kind of shows you the outside of the pirate fortress technically we're not even inside the pirate fortress yet but i'm gonna go ahead and end the episode here because in the next episode, like I said, the next episode is going to be really action-packed, and we're going to be getting all the way through the Pirate Fortress, and maybe even a little bit more. But I want to thank you guys for watching this episode of Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask, and I hope to see you guys back for the next episode.